In this episode of Student of Life with Joe Hefner, we address the question, Are you a river person or a pie person? Joe will examine the differences between the abundance mindset and the scarcity mindset, why you should choose to be a river person, and much more. For show notes, links, and other resources, please visit studentoflifepodcast.com forward slash 10. That's studentoflifepodcast.com forward slash 10. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me and welcome to Student of Life, which is the podcast for people seeking personal and professional fulfillment. I'm Joe Hafner, and I am so glad that you joined me today. We are talking about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, which is the whole idea of the abundance mindset versus the scarcity mindset. And the different way, the other way to put it is, are you a river person? Are you a pie person? I used to be a pie person way back when, and now I'm a river person. But let me just dive right in and explain to you what that's all about. When you're dealing with your mindset, that's the biggest tool that's going to determine whether or not you're successful, whether or not you have fulfillment in your life is how you think and how you, uh, the, the filters that you perceive the world through. So when you, when the world is, is the way you're, you're pulling in the information that's coming to you, there's some people who naturally take it in and see all the possibilities. And there's other people who naturally take it in and they see all the limitations. So which one are you? Are you someone who, when things happen, you see unlimited possibility? Are you someone that when things happen, you think about all the things that are going to stop you from doing what you need to do? Because the space between our ears, that is the biggest determiner of whether or not we're going to have what we want in life, whether or not we're going to achieve fulfillment, whether or not we're going to achieve success. Let's take a, let's take a look at these two, two things. So there's what I call pie people. Pie people are someone that all of the success that you can have, all the fulfillment you can have, all of the abundance in the world, all the things in the world that are worth having, there's a finite amount of them, a limited amount, like there's a pie. And if you're successful, that's a little bit less success for me. So when other people are able to do well and have success, that means if I'm a pie person, that I think that there's less success available for me. And so you see people, they never seem happy when someone else does well, or they never seem uh, to share in someone else's good fortune. Someone wins the lottery and they immediately get upset about it instead of saying, wow, isn't that great for that person? That's a pie person typically because they are looking at that and saying, wow, there's a certain amount of success in the world. They're probably not thinking of it this way. It's probably something more subconscious, which is why you got to spend time thinking about these things so you can see whether or not you're one or the other. Most people who are pie people don't realize they're pie people because they just, that's just the way they live. That's the way that that they were. Usually it's the way that they were brought up. It's the way their parents were. It's the way their parents were. And when you see those people who are always a victim, they're always looking at the negative going on. When someone else does well, they're always looking at it and saying, man, that stinks that they're doing well, or they're jealous of people who are successful. That's typically a sign that someone is a pie person. They believe that their ability to succeed is limited by other people's ability to succeed. So those are your pie people. Then you have your river people. River people believe that same success, that same good things in life, all the things that life has to offer that we can achieve is a flowing river. And anybody who wants to can step up and dip their cup into that river and have as much of that success as they want because there's a never-ending supply of it. So when you are a river person, you tend to, the, the, the outward signs of it are that you tend to share in other people's excitement when they do well. If you're in an office with a sales environment and it's a competitive environment and someone has a great month, you get excited for them. Not because you're not worried. You're not saying, well, they did great, so I can't have more. You're saying, they did great. That shows that I can do great too. You gain excitement. You gain confidence from seeing other people succeed because you know it means you can succeed too. There, You'll find as you go through life, if you think about people in terms of pie people and river people, they become very easy to spot. 
you see, have you ever met somebody who no matter what life throws at them, they're always upbeat and optimistic. They always think things are going to go well. You ever meet those people who when there's a drawing or a raffle, they always seem to win and they just put in their entry and they think that they're, they just expect to win. Then there's the other people who they walk through life. They're like Eeyore. They walk through life with a dark cloud over their head and everything is against them and things don't go well. When someone else does well, it's like, oh, they cheated. They were gaming the system and they're upset with them. You want to be a river person and not a pie person. And where this comes into play, the reason I frame it this way, it gives you an easy way to remember things so that when you run into people that you can kind of assess them and see where they're at on that scale of abundance to scarcity. Are they, are they someone who's a pie person who they just don't think abundance is possible because other people are stealing their abundance from them? You want to hang out with river people. You want to try to avoid hanging out with pie people. The truth of the matter is that success and wealth and prosperity and fulfillment, it's not, it's not a set amount in the world. It is a constantly growing and expanding amount of that going on that you can, that you can grab hold of. And when people have that abundance mentality where they just expect things to go well, they just believe that the world is open to them to achieve whatever they want to achieve, they walk through life with their eyes wide open. They see opportunity everywhere. They see when, when things come to them, they're looking at all the angles and seeing all the opportunity that's there. Someone else who has that scarcity mindset, they tend to look at the world as something that's against them and they have blinders on where they're just looking straight ahead and things that opportunities that might be coming to them are flying right by them and they're not even noticing them because they believe that the world has a limited amount of success and they've been locked out for some reason. One of my favorite quotes from Gary Keller, who's the founder of Keller, Keller Williams Realty, is back during the recession, I went to an event where he was promoting his book, The Shift, and he was talking about success in real estate. And really, I believe this applies to success in any endeavor you choose to pursue. And he said, there's not enough business for everyone but there's enough for anyone. I would take that quote and use it for success in life, for fulfillment in life, for whatever, that if everybody in the world was fully engaged trying to achieve their highest potential, that we would probably run out of resources and there probably wouldn't be enough for everybody. But the truth of the matter is a very, very small percentage of people actually pursue those things. So anybody who's willing to pay the price and do what they need to do to achieve success, to achieve fulfillment, there is plenty for, for anyone who's willing to do that. So there's not enough for everyone if everyone were to go after it, but there is enough for anyone because everyone does not go after it. If you want to be a person who has a fulfilled life, you need to choose to be someone that goes after it. You need to choose to be someone who has a uh, abundance mentality versus, versus a scarcity mentality. So I want to take a few minutes and talk about the abundance mindset. What are the characteristics of an abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset? The first thing I want to talk about is when you have an attitude of abundance, you, it's really difficult to believe, to have an abundance mindset if you don't at least believe in that there's a higher power in the world, a higher power who has set things in motion and is trying to create good things for us. I'm not going to say that there's not people who don't believe in God who have an abundance mindset because there probably are, but it's much more difficult. If you're thinking that everything is on you, any success you have, any abundance you have, anything that you go after, the only determining factor whether or not it happens is you and your own ability, it'd be very hard to maintain that abundance mindset if I'm believing that. The, so the first characteristic would be that you need to trust in God or the higher power you believe in. You need to trust in, in, their, in that entity's ability to provide. If I go through life and I believe that there is a benevolent God who wants to take care of me and wants to see me do well, and I'm going to do my part, that God will meet me there and, and provide that abundance for me. When you see people who, who go through life with that attitude, that's usually a sign that they have an abundance mindset. Whereas other people who believe everything's up to them, if they don't do it, it's not going to happen. Those people typically have the scarcity mindset because they don't trust the world. They don't trust God. They don't trust that somebody is going to, uh, that others are there to help them achieve and succeed. 
So that's the first characteristic. The second one is it goes right along with that, where you need to you need to trust in you need to have faith in God. You need to have faith in the process that you're following. You need to have faith that if you work hard, that abundance will come to you. So people who walk with that faith, have you ever met somebody who has a dream that they're going after and they just are sure they're going to be wildly successful, even though the whole world maybe says everything's pointing to them not being successful, yet they have this unwavering faith that it's going to work, probably because that's part of their purpose. That's part of why they believe God made them and they're going after it with all that they have. And people like that often see that abundance come to them because they're walking with that faith. Also, too, another way to look at that is when you go to um, work like a sales process, if you're working a process that's already been successful before for other people, you have to have faith that that process works and you need to follow it so that you can achieve that abundance that, that comes to people who are sold out to making that process work. Those who are scarcity thinkers, they only go by what they see and what they believe, again, going back to thinking that they're responsible for everything. You see scarcity thinkers are trying to adjust the process so that they can make it more their, more their own and be able to uh, try and make things more happen more quickly instead of trusting that the hard work will, will ultimately allow them to succeed and have their abundance. Another characteristic that you see with people who are abundance thinkers is that they're hopeful and optimistic. That, that comes from the belief that you're moving forward and that, that you're going to have all that you need. The, go back to that idea of success and fulfillment is a flowing river. You dip your cup in and take as much as you want. Well, if I believe that, I'm naturally going to be a hopeful and optimistic person. I'm going to believe that things are going to work out because going back to some of the other characteristics, I believe that there's a higher power who wants to see me succeed. I believe that there's forces working in my favor that are going to help me succeed if I do my part. And so why wouldn't you be hopeful and optimistic that things are going to go your way? People who are scarcity thinkers, they're going to be full of fear and doubt instead of hopeful and optimistic. They're afraid the world's really built against them. They're afraid that someone else has had success before they were able to, and now that success is gone, not to be had by them. They're fearful they're not going to be enough because they're counting on themselves instead of believing that there's a higher power, that there's a God that wants to see them be, be good and do well. All right, so another aspect, another characteristic of the abundance mindset that you see is the whole idea of being generous and sharing and giving. The most generous people are the people who believe that, there's, that they're always going to be successful. The, the, have you ever noticed people who maybe they don't even have anything, yet they're still very generous. They're giving their time, they're giving their money, they're giving what they have because they believe in the abundance of the world. They believe that when they do that, it's going to come back to them. They believe that when they're generous, they're going to, they're going to earn more, they're going to achieve more. Then you have other people who are very scarcity-minded. They kind of hold on to what they have really tightly. They hoard what they have. And the reason that they do that is because they're afraid that if they let go of that, they're never going to get it back, that they can't give to other people because they might need it for themselves down the road. So this whole idea of being generous. So if, if you see people who are extremely generous, the odds are high that they are an abundance. They are having an abundance mindset, that they're, that they're river people instead of pie people. And those people who are really stingy, and, you know, have every nickel they've ever earned. And, you know, probably they have what we used to call one-way pockets where the money goes in and never comes back out. Those people are generally going to be your scarcity thinkers. Now, don't get confused with being frugal and being a good uh, manager of the resources you have with being scarcity-minded because that's a whole nother issue. But there's people who they're very, very uh, stingy. They're not generous. They're afraid of losing what they have. And that's that scarcity mindset that comes in. You have another characteristic of the abundance mindset is that people who are always seem to be content with where they're at in their life. And then you have the scarcity mindset people who they just aren't, they're just always discontented. They are always feeling like they should have more. They're always feeling like they're not achieving enough, like they're not doing enough and they're dissatisfied with where they're at. 
Now, being satisfied with where you're at and content with where you're at doesn't mean that you don't want more. You're not striving for more. Being, being content comes with knowing that you've given your best effort. You're doing everything that you have power over. And again, going back to it, you're trusting the process. You're trusting God to deliver to you the abundance that comes with what you're doing. But knowing that you've done everything you could up to that point, you are content with where you're at. You're not sitting there thinking you should have more because you've done what you can and and you know that more is coming. All right, another good characteristic to think about that helps you identify a river person from a pie person is the whole idea of having what I call a steward mentality. I believe that the things that I have, for me, I believe that there's some, that everything I own was, was really given to me by God and it's mine to manage for him. And it's not, it's not mine. He could take it away at any time. The idea there is I want to manage what I've been given to the best of my ability to serve my family and to serve the world. And that doesn't just include money. That includes all my resources. That includes my intellect. That includes my education. That includes the knowledge that I have, the skills that I have. That includes my work. That includes everything where I want to share those things and I want to be able to use those for the betterment of the world and the betterment of my family. Where somebody who has that scarcity mindset, they have an ownership mentality where that's mine and I'm not giving it to anybody else. I'm not sharing it with anybody else. And don't even think of trying to ask me to share it with you. And that comes from the, again, the idea of I have limited resources. I only am going to get what I'm going to get and I can't afford to give any to anybody else. It's a fear response. When you have that scarcity mindset and you act in those ways that are not generous, you hoard, that you don't want to share things with other people, it's not that those people are bad people. It's that they have such a fear because they have the wrong way of thinking, where they believe that they just have a certain level they can get to and that's it. And there's just this scarcity amongst them. It's kind of like if they were living in a famine ravaged area and they managed to find food. Well, if it's a famine all around you, how good are you going to feel about sharing that food with other people? Whereas, you know, so they're walking through their life like they're in a famine ravaged nation and the people who have the abundance mindset, it's like they're walking through cornfields and everything's there and there's so much around them is they can have as much as they want and they never have to worry about running out. And when you realize how the two minds work, it makes you have compassion on the people who have that scarcity mindset instead of wondering, well, why are they like that? You can see why they're like that because they believe that, that, there's, that the world is full of scarcity and they're never going to have what they want. They're never going to be able to achieve what they want. They're never going to be able to have the success they want. They're not going to be able to have the fulfillment that they want. And I'm telling you, it's all about changing your mindset. When you change your mindset, you change the outcome. When you have that abundance mentality... It's amazing how the world seems like a different place where you see opportunities where you didn't see it before. Think of the the horse that has pulling a cart and has those blinders on where all it can do is look straight ahead. That horse, then why do why do you think they put those blinders on a horse who's doing who's uh, walking like that or running like that? It's because they don't want the horse to be distracted by what's around him because he might see something that looks more interesting to him than the straight path he's going on. People with that scarcity mindset, they have those blinders on where they're walking straight ahead. There could be a gold bar sitting to the left of them that they can't even see because they're just focused straight ahead on the path that they're on and not seeing the possibilities they're anywhere else. So let's go back to these characteristics. So another characteristic of the abundance mindset is the idea of completing others. What that means is you're looking to, when you, have, when you have an attitude of abundance in your life, you are looking to help other people. You're looking to help other people succeed. Have you met people in your life that are so generous with their time and resources that they find out that you need, it, that you need something or you're trying to figure something out and like they drop what they're doing and they come and help you try and figure it out? They have no, they have no reason to do that. It's because of who they are. It's because they believe in abundance and they're trying to help other people find abundance as well. What you see with people in that scarcity mindset is you see hyper competition. You see them 
trying to beat you to something instead of helping you get there because they're afraid that if you get there first and you figure it out first, that's less for them. It's just amazing when you really think about all of this that there's people in, in the same family or people who are sitting next to each other where one of them just just believes that the world is a open place where you can go have what you can go have whatever you're willing to work for and the other the other person sitting right next to them in the same situation is thinking wow the world is a horrible place where you can never have what you want it's just stacked up against me it's all about changing your mindset so let's let's talk from it let's say that you've been listening to this and you've said you know what i have some pie person tendencies and i want to be more of a river person how do you go about doing that the first thing that you always want to do is look at who you're hanging out with, the people that you surround yourself with. We are the um, average of the five people that we spend our most time with. If you're hanging out with a bunch of people moaning and groaning about how bad they have it and how the world's against them, and that's the only people you're with, I'll bet you you end up more a pie person than a river person. Where if you hang out with the people who live in abundance, and expect the world to work out great for them and they step out of their comfort zone on a daily basis and work to create the abundance that they believe is out there and you hang out with them, you're more likely to be a river person than a pie person. So the first step, hang out with people who are abundance people. Then the second thing you need to do is, again, going back to some of those characteristics, believing in that higher power that's got your back, what you do is you do your part to achieve your success or your fulfillment or your outcome that you're searching for and you do the best you can do and you let go of the outcome. Quit worrying about what the outcome is because if you do the work, eventually the outcome is going to give, be the outcome that you want. It'll at least be the outcome that you deserve based on the amount of work you put in. A lot of people, they want to do the minimal work and get the outcome that they want. You need to quit worrying about that. Go. Do the things that you want to do. If you're, if you're trying to uh, build a sales career, go do the prospecting you know you need to do. Let go of the outcome and put in the work and follow a proven path and the outcome will happen. If you're, if you're blazing a new trail, a new business or something, find other people who have done similar things. Find their proven path. Follow that. Do the work. Do the best you can. Grind away and let go of the outcome. Let the outcome happen. And that will help you to have a more abundance in your, in your thinking because by not being fixated on the outcome, you can see what's coming and adjust to what's coming as opposed to having an outcome in mind. Sometimes your path ends up being completely different than what you intended when you start down a certain road. If you have this outcome in your mind of where you want to go, some great opportunity can come across your path that you completely miss because you're fixated on the wrong outcome. So that's the second part. Do your part and let the outcome take care of itself. Let go of it. Then you always want to learn how to be content with where you're at currently, but always striving for more. And by more, I don't necessarily mean more money. I mean to be a better person, to, be, to have more success, to have more fulfillment, to have a better family. Whatever it is where you want to grow and get better, you need to learn to be content where you're at currently but still trying to figure out ways to get better. You should, be, you should be content because you've put, again, going back to the previous one that we mentioned here about doing your part, if you're doing your part and putting all you've got into it and you're grinding away and doing the things you need to to have the success and fulfillment that you want, you need to be content with that outcome. I was just watching today, I'm, I'm a big sports guy, and I was watching uh, Kurt Warner, the, you know, the NFL Network, was doing a special on, uh, on Kurt Warner's life. You know, he went to a Super Bowl with the Rams and won a Super Bowl. Then he lost a Super Bowl with the Rams. And then several years later, at the end of his career, he took the Arizona Cardinals to a Super Bowl. He was going through that. And when the Super Bowl ended, the Cardinals lost on a last second play that stole victory from them, where they, I, I believe they were tied at that moment when the Steelers scored on the last play. And when Kurt Warner was going off the field, he stopped with his family. He just said, you know, this is good because I did everything that I could do. I couldn't have done better. I'm content, even though I'm not happy with the outcome. I'm content with what I've accomplished and where I'm at because I know I've given my best. 
when you get to the end of your life or even when you get to the end of a season in your life, you want to be able to look back and say, I've done everything that I knew how to do to be successful here or to achieve the outcome I was hoping to have or to have the success I wanted to have. And if you can look back and say, I've done that, you should be able to be content with where you ended up. So then finally, the, this is the most important one for me. If you want to strive to be a river person instead of a pie person, you want to make sure that you don't allow fear or other people to ever put caps on what you dream in your life. If you've got big dreams, you need to go after them. So often in society, it's so easy for people, scarcity-minded people, people who are, who are afraid, people who don't want to achieve themselves, people who are stuck where they are. It's very easy to sit on the sideline and put down people who are going after something big, who are trying to achieve something big. I remember when I was, uh, wow, just out of college, a friend of mine and I created a game that we were trying to sell. It was, the game was called Hot Seat. And we were trying to sell it. And I remember we had put the game together. We had designed it. We were getting ready to sell it. Um, at some point in that process, we had gone back, both of us, the, my, my friend and I who worked on that game, both of us grew up in Buffalo. And I must have been, I was out of college for a few years, so I must have been 23, 24 years old. We went back to Buffalo at Christmas time to visit family and friends. And I remember I went to a party with a bunch of people who I had gone to high school with and uh, my brother, my older brothers and people they had gone to high school with. And I remember, I still, this is so vivid to me still, I remember that I was telling people about the game that we came up with and explaining it and saying what we're going to do with it. Every one of them, not, well, I'm not going to say everyone, but the large majority of people who responded that said things like, oh, that won't work. Oh, well, you need to change this. Oh, that's not right. That's not good. And just a lot of people trying to discourage us from going after this dream we had to create and sell this game. And looking back, I know that that's human nature for most people. The large majority of people, it's so much easier to sit on the sideline and stomp on someone else's dreams than, that, than the, to risk having your own dreams. And so many people have no desire, um, well, no desire is the wrong word. So many people have no drive and no willingness to get past the fear and go after the things that they really want in life. So they will stomp on your dreams. They will tell you that what you're doing won't work and they will put caps on the dreams that you can have for yourself. And what you need to do is not pay attention to those people, not hang around with those people and don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't achieve everything that you want to achieve. I mean, going back to Kurt Warner, he was bagging groceries overnights at a grocery store in Iowa somewhere and he ended up being the Super Bowl MVP, the uh, league MVP, and now he's a Hall of Famer in the NFL. And it's because he had a dream and he kept going after and he didn't let other people tell him that he couldn't have that dream. And you see that all over the place. You see that in business. You see that in sports especially. But all, all it takes is staying true to yourself, keeping that dream alive, and surrounding yourself with people who encourage you instead of discouraging you. If you have pie person tendencies, I really encourage you to take a look at, at these uh, four steps to try and become a river person because I'm telling you that the, there is enough success and prosperity and fulfillment for anybody who's willing to go after it. And if you're willing to change your mindset and do the things you need to to take a leap of faith and get past your fear and go after those things, you can be wildly successful. You can have great abundance in your life and great satisfaction in your life because you've gone after that abundance. That's the podcast for today. I am so glad that you joined me. Um, I do want to encourage everybody who's listening to go to the Facebook page. Just go on Facebook and look up Student of Life Podcast and you can find that Facebook page. And if you will go and like the Facebook page, periodically, most Sundays I do a Facebook Live you will get to see when I'm live and, and come on there and see what I'm talking about at that time. But you got to like the page so it gets in your news feed on Facebook. And again, go to iTunes, Stitcher. Please subscribe. Let me know uh, what you like, what you don't like, where I can improve, where you think I'm doing a great job. And we will see you again next week. Have a great week. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the podcast. 
please subscribe to Student of Life at iTunes, Stitcher or wherever you go to for your favorite podcasts. Visit us online at studentoflifepodcast.com. That's studentoflifepodcast.com. We are on Facebook at Student of Life. Email us at joe at studentoflifepodcast.com. If you enjoyed the show, help us spread the word by telling someone you know about Student of Life. And please join us again next time. Thanks. <laughs>